Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast for August 21st. It's Wednesday, and we're breaking down golf and soccer with Nick Borman. And I'll tell you, he hit a Billy Horschel over Jason Day golf bet uh, last podcast for last weekend's golf tournament, plus 115. Uh, love the analysis on the on what Jason Day's caddy going through some caddies and uh I, I jumped on it with you just kind of betted it blindly nick so thanks thanks for that uh thanks for that free play and uh welcome on the podcast man how are you i'm doing great man uh th- thanks for having me and, and glad we made some money on on that play for sure he was trailing the first three days but came back on sunday and got us a nice win yeah for sure so guys uh about the you know 10 to 15 minute mark we're going to be breaking down the last tournament of the year on the golf season from nick get his top play top 30 players only in the fedex cup also if you haven't been checking out nick's page on sportsmemo.com you need to he went five one and one in the seven games we previewed last week also with that free golf pick that we talked about and his english championship series that league in england he's given out his whole season for free so check that out out each and every week on sportsmemo.com highly recommend it let's talk uh, mls tonight's games we got columbus at new york city fc new york city fc minus a goal total of three nick yeah last week was uh successful we talked a lot about the midweek midweek uh travel schedule for a lot of the road teams is, is always tough and this is another one here uh, New York sits third in the table right now. They're 14 points ahead of Columbus, who's actually second from, from the bottom right now, just ahead of uh, Cincinnati. Um, Columbus was a solid team last year, but they've been a victim of injury, injuries this season. They had a load of players leave this summer for international duty. Uh, and most recently, they had their keeper, Zach Steffen, uh, leave for Man City before the start of the Premier League. So they've been in kind of in shambles all year. Uh, they are back uh, almost fully healthy now, though, and they've been playing better. They're unbeaten in their last six games. They have three wins and three draws. Um, a couple solid wins, uh, uh, excuse me, solid draws over the other New York team, the Red Bulls, and at San Jose. But the scheduling has really been in their favor. They've had just one game per week, no midweek matches, um, and now they have to travel twice in four days as they also play this weekend at Cincinnati. Um, so I think we're going to see their unbeaten streak probably come to an end here. Um, New York, they've been playing steadily all season. Um, they've had four wins in their last six games. They do have a big game coming up this weekend against their rivals, uh, the Red Bulls. So they're going to desperately want to ensure they get the three points here because uh, that's going to be a tough game at home. So I think New York's going to win this one, um, laying the full goal. Not a ton of value, but I think that's the only way to play this one. Uh, take New York, Drew. Okay, we got the other New York team, the Red Bulls, at the D.C. United team. Pick them here, total of three. Seeing a home team at pick them in the MLS, Nick, I know you've taught me enough to know that the Red Bulls got to be the more talented team by a long shot. What are you thinking? Yeah, um, the Red Bulls, probably on, on paper, neutral field, I would agree. Um, right now, they, they've honestly been – the best way to talk about both of these teams, though, is they've both been mediocre all year. Um, they're both likely going to make the playoffs, but – aren't probably going anywhere in the playoffs uh dc started off better than the red bulls and 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 right now they're neck and neck as far as the standings go as the red bulls have been playing a little bit better as of late um but really this comes down to dc at home uh they've that's really the only place they've been getting results this year um they have just one loss uh in their last nine home games with four wins and four draws uh, but otherwise they've been they've been terrible when they travel so luckily they're home here the only news for dc that's a little negative is wayne rooney um has decided that he's going to be leaving after this season and going back to england to join derby um as a player slash coach so uh there's a little uh i don't know just dis- distraction i guess you could say going on possibly there um, but otherwise, I like D.C. here. The Red Bulls, um, they play, I just talked about, they, they're going to play the other New York team uh, this upcoming weekend. So this is a stretch of two really important games for them. Um, but they've they've been inconsistent in, on the road. I mean, they have, um, they have just one win in their last six games with four losses and just one draw. Uh, the Red Bulls uh, actually were a slight underdog to start. Now they're a slight favorite. They were plus 175. On the three-way line, they're now plus 145. So if that line continues to move, then we we should see D.C. plus a quarter of a goal come out. If it does, it's definitely worth jumping on. Um, If it doesn't, maybe still throw a little bit on D.C.'s way just for the home and away splits between these teams. But otherwise, not a ton in this one. I wouldn't go heavy on this one, Drew. All right, we got San Jose at Los Angeles FC to finish it off for tonight. Minus a goal and a half here, LAFC. Total of three and a half. 
LAFC have been the best team in the league all year. They just booked their playoff spots, the first team in the league to do so, and they still have nine games remaining in the regular season. Um, they have a plus 42 goal differential right now, um, and the next best team in the league is Atlanta at plus 15. So it just kind of shows how big of a disparity and how much better they've been than really the rest of the league. Um, San Jose had been rolling along, uh, but they've now gone winless in their last three games, and those were all against non-playoff teams, actually, uh, with back-to-back road losses at Colorado and Kansas City, who both have had uh, really tough years. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, LAFC is really not the team you want to play, of course, when you're trying to get back on track. Um, San Jose's already lost twice to LAFC this this year. They lost 0-5 at, at home back in March, but they were playing terribly then. And then they lost 1-3. to uh, in June in a U.S. Open Cup, Cup match. But that, that game was much closer than that score indicated. Um, however, you know, I, I just don't think that San Jose has a, has much of a chance here. LAFC uh, with Carlos Vela, I mean, he's just been fantastic. He's going to be named the league MVP this year. He already set an MLS records for goals plus assists this year. He's got 39, 24 goals, 15 assists, which is an MLS record, again, with nine games to go. Um, LAFC was knocked out of the U.S. Open Cup last week or two weeks ago so now their focus is purely on the on the league play um and at home they've scored f- at least four goals themselves in four straight games so i think we're going to see them you know get on the, the board at least three times in this one i like both them to to cover the minus 1.5 and the over here but i like um lafc minus 1.5 a little more so home in the over here in this one drew all right, Nick. And Nick's got his Wednesday MLS double play up. It's going off here in just uh, just tonight. So check it out at sportsmemo.com. And with the coupon code MLS, that's it, just those three letters, MLS at checkout. You can get it for just $9. That's good savings there for the Sports Memo podcast. Coupon code MLS at checkout Wednesday. MLS double play from Nick Borman. We got one game on Thursday. Minnesota at Kansas City. Kansas City minus three quarters of a goal. Total of three, Nick. Yeah, I like uh, I like the road one in this one. So Minnesota, uh, they've been having a very very good year. Um, they they improved their defense tremendously from last year. They had four signings in the off season, and and so far it shows. Um, they've they've been playing a ton of home games as of late, though, because they started the year as they were finishing their their new stadium. So they started the year with five straight road games. So now they're kind of on a run of a, a lot of home games. So this is actually their um, second road game in, in their last nine games overall. Um, they lost three to five at Dallas and they drew one one at Salt Lake. But overall, they've been playing very well. They have just that one loss I mentioned at Dallas in their last fourteen games overall. Um, so it's been a very, very good run for them. Uh, Kansas City, they actually finished number one in the West last year, but right now are six points outside of the playoff spot this year, and that's a lot of that's been due to, to uh, into injuries. Um, they have just two wins in their last six games. They did beat a good San Jose team at home in their last game, but uh, overall they've been very, uh, very inconsistent, you could say, uh, all year, again, because of injuries. Um, but I think that the value is definitely with the road team here. Um, if Kansas City is to win this game, chances are it's not going to be by more than one goal. So I think at worst we're looking at kind of a half a half wager risk here at the plus .75 number. But I think uh, I think Minnesota can, can win this game or at least earn a draw. So I like the road one here uh, in this one, Drew. All right, Nick, let's head across the pond. We got Italy. Serie A begins this weekend. Preview of the defending champions, Juventus. Their first match on Saturday, Juventus minus a goal and a half at Parma, total at 2.75. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the, this one real quick only because uh, the Serie A gets under, underway this year, uh, this week, which is the last of the big five leagues to go. Um, Juventus, eight-time defending champions, and honestly, you might as well give them the title already. Um, and, and, you know, the odds are, are minus 230 uh, right now as a future for them to win the league. So there's not even value on a futures play with them. So the odds, uh, the markets definitely agree with the fact that they're, uh, they're most likely going to be winning this thing. Uh, Ronaldo will now be in his second season. Um, and they're ex- really excited about bringing on um, Italian, Italian manager uh, Maurizio Sarri, who came from Chelsea uh, after one year last year. But he was, uh, he's been in coaching in italy for 12 years prior to that so he knows the leagues knows how to play italian football um but they have a ton of big news over the offseason they brought in um ax's young defender uh delight for about 100 million he he's touted as one of the best young defensive players in the world um and he was fantastic last year he helped ax get to the uh, champions league semifinals actually knocked 
um, Juventus out of the Champions League. And during that that tie, um, Ronaldo uh, kind of talked to Del- Delight during the during the matches or post matches and, and said, hey, you know, I know uh, you're not going to be at AX long. And when you leave, come here. And there he is. He's he joined him uh, over the offseason. So pretty cool to see. Um, they also brought in another, four other defensive players, uh, all young talents. One guy, Danio from Man City, has been uh, he's a, he's a little bit older at 28, but everybody else is 20 to 21 year, years old. So they were really trying to bolster up their defense, um, as last year was a little bit of a down year for them uh, defensively, anyway. But they still finished plus 40 goal differential. So they're just you know it's head and shoulders above the rest of the league uh, for this first match. They're up against Parma, who actually surprisingly gave him fits last year. Juventus won 2-1 to one at Parma, but drew 3-3 three to three at home, which they really have no business giving up the three goals to Parma. And, and honestly, it is a big reason why they were trying to bolster up their defense this year. Um, Parma was the fifth lowest scoring team in the league last year, only three points clear of being relegated to Serie B last, uh, last season, and had a minus 20 goal differential. So, um, you know, I... The only way I think you can really play this one is is taking Juventus. You know, it might take some time for some of the new players to get accustomed. I think only Delight probably is going to be the one playing uh, this match versus the rest of them starting to come in over the next few matches. So I don't think there's a ton of you know change for some of the players. But Juventus uh, laying the full goal and a half, you can get them plus 105 right now at that price. Um, so I think that's the only way to play this one, Drew. Take Juventus. Nice. Like it, Nick. All right. Taking Juventus as the favorite in this one. We got uh, the coupon code, guys, MLS at checkout to get his Wednesday night double play for just $9. That's MLS at checkout, sportsmemo.com. Let's get into the golf, Nick. We got uh, the last tournament of the year, the Tour Championship, top 30 players only in the FedEx Cup, man. I'll throw it to you. We got to follow up this Billy Horschel plus 115 ticket with another (laughs) winner, man. What what should I be betting this weekend? All right. Uh, I got a couple, but I'll give you the head-to-head I like is Patrick Reed plus 170. You're not going to like who it's against. Kepka. No, I can't bet against (laughs) Kepka. I've won more money off of him than any other golfer in the world. I know we've we've made a lot of money on him this this uh, summer. We've talked you know on several podcasts throughout the year of taking Kepka, but I think this is uh, this is one situation that uh, Reed is the guy, and at plus one seventy, I think there's just a ton of value. Um, honestly, it's it's just been you know Reed over his last seven starts, um, his worst finish is um, they're all in the top twenty five. He has three top tens during that stretch, and his worst finish was a tied for twenty third in seven straight starts, which. Honestly, there's not many guys on the PGA Tour you see year, uh, in any year do that. So he is just playing fantastic. He won the first playoff event and finished tied for 19 last week. Um, Kepka, he won the WGC St. Jude the week after he finished fourth at the Open, which we, uh, we definitely made some money on him there. But since, he's finished tied for 30th and tied for 24th in the first two playoff events. And before that, he finished tied for 57th and tied for 65th in his two starts before the open. So much more inconsistent. And we kind of talked about it before how he's, you know, a major kind of, he really shows up differently at the majors and other tournaments. Now this isn't a major, it's still a big tournament, of course. Um, but I just think based on current form, um, and experience, Reed has good experience here at East Lake, which is where they're playing this week. Um, I think there's a good value here at plus 170. The one thing I'll throw in when, when going through this, this tournament this year, they're, there, there was one part I, we've, I've never had a deal with before when um, you know looking at handicapping golf, and that's the first time ever the Tour Championship. The players are awarded strokes; they're calling it starting strokes based on where they entered the tournament. So Justin Thomas is leading the FedEx Cup going in. He's going to start the tournament at minus ten, right? And then there's only the top thirty players make this field. So players twenty six through thirty start the tournament at even par. So anywhere in between there you're filling in so it's a really unique situation where you guys before you even tee off you already have a guy he's actually two shots ahead of uh, second place and guys that are in 30th place are 10 shots behind the leader so um you know the betting markets for the first time ever i've had to kind of try to put a price on how much a stroke is worth right you know um reed is actually going to be trailing kepka by one shot to start the tournament so that's another factor i wanted to mention but i still think there's great value at him at plus 170 so definitely going to be an interesting tournament um i like a couple other plays john rom i think is good for a top five finish at plus 200 
And I like Webb Simpson at even money for a top 10 finish where he's actually start, starting in the top 10 because um, he starts at minus four this week. So those are two other guys I like for some futures plays. Um, but I really like uh, Reed this week over Kepka Drew. So I don't know if you'll be brave enough to jump on board, but that's my recommendation here for this one. No, I'm, I can't. I can't fade Kepka. I mean, I, I've made more money on him. It, 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 I don't even bet golf a lot, Nick. You've put. You've just uh, kind of that that run that he was on with the majors. And and what this is the last term of the year. You got to think his mind's going to be into it, no? It is for sure, and it has been uh, the last two weeks. And Reed's outplayed him each of the last two weeks. It's the playoffs, um, so you know there's a lot of money on the line. There's a ten million dollar annuity to the winner of the FedEx Cup. So of course these guys are are going for it and going all all, all in. But I just think. Um, he just looks a little off right now. Watching him the last two tournaments, he's not quite as sharp. Short game, a little bit leaky, I guess you could say. Um, not quite converting all the up and downs he was when he was making mistakes. So he just looks a little off, and I think there's good value here. And what about, um, what would you say, Rom and, and, and Thomas, I believe, the other two? Why, why do you like them? Rom is, as a top five finish, um, he yeah. finished um, – uh, he's he's going to start at tied for sixth, so he's already almost there. He's going to be one shot out of that top five uh, starting position. He finished top five in both playoff events so far. And get this, probably the craziest stat is he's finished top five in five of his last seven starts with his worst finish a tied for 11th. I mean, that's incredible. Um, so he's been on a crazy good run. And actually, I looked at his um, outright price. He's plus 1550 uh, to win the tournament. It's a little risky because um, he's going to start six shots behind Justin Thomas. Uh, but there's only four guys, five guys in front of him um, on the leaderboard to start. So it might be worth a few bucks there. But I really think John Rahm is going to have no problems finishing top five. Again, he's already starting one shot out of the top five already. And so then it, uh, it, it's, it's John Rahm finishing top five. And what's the price on that? Plus 200. Plus two hundred to finish on the top five, and he's and he's only starting at number six, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and what were those stats that you said? The trends that were, that, that were real powerful. You mind repeating that? He fin- has finished top five in his last uh, in five of his last seven starts, and his worst finish in any of those starts was tied for eleventh. And, and and those are against full fields, you know, with everybody starting, you know, even with each other. This is thirty players, and he's already starting tied for sixth. Dang, and, and so this is thirty players, and what's the normal the normal field before the normally, cut? Normally, you're going to see about 140 players. 140 down to 30. Wow. Okay. Okay. Good man. And, w- and what was the last one you had? Uh, Webb Simpson is the other one. He's at uh, even money right now to finish top ten. He's already going to be in the top ten to start, so he's starting at four under par, which is in the uh, top ten right now to start. Um, and he's been playing well. He's got two top ten finishes in his last four starts, and he's got uh, no worse than a tied for thirtieth, tied for thirtieth, excuse me, in his last eleven starts. And again, similar thing. And, his, and, and those are all full field. So the, both of these guys have just been steadily cashing and, and finishing near the tops of leaderboards week in and week out against big fields. So limited field already in that starting position. I like both of them to kind of keep going throughout this this week. Good stuff, Nick. And guys, the coupon code is MLS at checkout for his uh, his double play for Wednesday's action. Also, Nick, what you got a a play for golf up this weekend? Five percent top PGA Tour Championship play. And again, guys, our our five percenters are normally forty bucks. This is discounted down to nineteen bucks. And uh, you know, with that, you, it's a great deal there as well. Under twenty bucks for his top play, and what you, they get a bonus with that as well, right, Nick? Yeah, I have uh, three other plays going this week, so all four plays, including that top play, for uh, for nineteen bucks this week. Last term of the year, wanna wanna help everybody go out with a bang. Good stuff, man. Follow him on Twitter at Borman zero zero. Thanks for the time, Nick. Uh, next week, I'm actually on the move out to Vegas, so we aren't going to have a soccer or golf pod, but uh, we will be back in two. Tuesdays from now with Nick Borman on breaking down this soccer action. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Best of luck with your bets, and we'll talk later.